hello guys and welcome back to Madden 20 Subscriber League. Um, a little bit. Uh, in today's episode though, we will be taking on, we're going to be watching the Chicago Bears take on the Minnesota Vikings as there's a little bit of a rivalry going there. Zach Keeser has kind of called out Casey Woods and Casey Woods said, uh, hey, if I beat you here and I stomp your team out like I'm going to do, you, you, you have to sign with the Vikings next year so we can dominate the league. Um, even though he's kind of turned his back on his 92 overall running back, Rico Mayo Jr. We'll see what happens here. Uh, this is an important game for the Minnesota Vikings as they are 1-2. and two. They don't want to fall down below 500 too far, especially when you're going against the division leaders, the Chicago Bears who stand at a 3-1 and one record. Um, you lose here today, you're only helping them get closer to dominating your division. This is a very important game for Minnesota. Um, I think, of course, if you're Minnesota, you're definitely the underdogs. You're going to have to, in my opinion, stop Zach Keister and put a little bit of pressure on Trey Wright. Trey Wright, in my opinion, there was a time where he was a very dominating uh, you know, quarterback, but I do think that he isn't the best quarterback in this league. I think with pressure on Trey Wright, you will make him throw multiple interceptions in this game. So put pressure on the, on the kid. I think uh, you could really benefit off of that. And of course you have a new weapon to watch out for and Jonathan Stokely the wide receiver that Chicago drafted um, it all depends you do not want Trey Wright to have time to throw to the weapons um, Jacob Johnson and Jonathan Stokely also their tight end McAllister it's, it's just you don't want to give them time but I think it all starts with putting pressure on Trey Wright and stopping Zach Keister I think that's where it's going to benefit them the most. As far as the Chicago Bears, I think if they just come out here do their thing, get started early, well, I think they're going to win. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to hop into the first drive, and it is the Chicago Bears starting off. So this should be interesting. This is a live commentary episode, and we're not going to watch the whole game, but we will watch the highlights. It's, that's how you that's how you stop Keister right there. Just crack that man. It's a team effort to stop him. And that's exactly what they do. So second and eight. Again, uh, you know, we'll see if they can send pressure here. Zach Keister's going to get handed the ball off early as he breaks free and bulldozes over two players. Oh, my goodness. That is, that's not what you want to happen. Um, yikes. I, I, you got to force Trey Wright to pass. I do think even though Chicago has all the weapons as far as, like, wide receivers and tight ends, if you could stop Zach Keister, I don't really think Trey Wright is the strongest quarterback. And this is Metro News Network hating. If you got something to say, then say it. But Trey Wright is not the right man for the job. I'm calling Chicago out. I don't think they're as good as they say as they think they are. We'll see what Zach Keiser has to say about that. What Jacob Johnson has to say. And um, quick pass out there, and bam! That's Jonathan Stokely getting cracked down. And yeah, look at that, Trey Wright, proving exactly what what Metro News Network is saying. Your first pass is a negative four four yards. Are you scared to throw it down the field? Are you scared to throw it down the field? Hey, I got to make this this crap spicy. Look, you know, Chicago, they, they, they bulldoze over every team in the league. I'd like to see them bully Metro News Network. If you lose here today, you're not going to hear the end of it. I promise you. And oh, my goodness. Trey Wright just gives me more ammo. I mean, that's not to the right team. I'll tell you that. And, uh, wow, that's what I said. Pressure that guy, and, and he's going to throw picks. It, it's just... He wasn't even pressured and he did it. I don't think. I mean, I'm pretty sure they were only sending four. And either way, that is a horrible way to start the game. And in Chicago, honestly, they need to win this game. We're being honest. They, a lot of teams are calling them the Cinderella story. You, you won the Super Bowl in year number one, and you haven't done anything since. I mean, you haven't even made it to the playoffs. And, that, and I think that's the problem where they, they're allowed to say the Cinderella story because... You haven't made the playoffs since your Super Bowl win. What are you going to do? And that's Rico Mayo Jr. taking off down the field. He's got plenty of room as he gets brought down by um, Bax Baxter there. Or I believe that's, yeah, Baxter? Is it Baxter? I'm not too sure there, but um, he is a subscriber cornerback. It's been a minute since I've actually recorded um, the last episode here, so. Definitely got to refresh my memory here. Billy Xavier, that's the subscriber. 
decided to stick to his position to help his team out, and he got benefited off of it. Now he's a superstar caliber player. You see that star under his feet. We'll see what happens here. Second and 11. Rico Mayo Jr. showing that he's the better running back here today. This is going to be a running back duel. Who will be the better running back? I think both quarterbacks are, are lackluster and average at best. Um, and none of them have, have shown me a reason why to, to say different. Um, I do want to note, guys, there is a lot of construction going on literally right outside my apartment complex as they work on the apartment place. So if you do hear stuff, man, I, I apologize, but I, I want to record this and get you guys, get this out to you guys because it's been since our Madden series. So if you cut it out, and I might just go quiet, and that's that's just making a horrible um, You got to be careful there when you do that, though. So here we go as, as it's going crazy outside. In my world, this game right here is... Vikings trying to finish as it's right there to the subscriber wide receiver. Looks like the Bears are going to send in a blitz more than likely. Which is going to keep it. He has so much time, and that's what happens when you have that much time. The Minnesota Vikings taking the have weapons themselves. A multiple um, subscriber wide receivers on this start of the series, and that's Harnish. Subscriber right there getting a touchdown. So, with that being said, we are going to go ahead and advance this game. Get this game underway a little faster here. So, we're going to go ahead and advance it play by play. If someone gets into the red zone, we will stop and watch. First and ten. Looks like the Bears are trying to do something. Reception to Zach Keister there. Incomplete pass. Second and ten. It's a drop pass by Jacob Johnson. Hit him in the numbers, but he couldn't bring it in. And a 30-yard reception by Zach Keister. He's doing it himself this year. He really has. He is. He's put the team on his back this season. He really wants another ring. You can tell. This now there are rumors that he won't be coming back to Chicago. Uh, chances of him re-signing are slim. Maybe I don't know. Um, really, he just said there is a chance he might not be. You know, lacing up his cleats for Chicago. Yeah, would that be and if, if if Chicago does lose their running back, their franchise player like Zach Keister, I think that's really going to hurt them as far as having another Super Bowl chance in this series. You don't want to lose a guy like Zach Keister. I wonder what it'll take for them to, for him to stay. I do think if uh, they get a Super Bowl ring or at least a shot at it, I'm pretty sure he would stay. I mean, I know I would if if we came up close or if we did it. But we'll see. It all depends on this year. So far, honestly, he's put the team on his back. And then that's another question. is like, do you want to stay even if you do make a run? Do you want to stay because you did most of the work? Third and 12 now. Going to uh, Jacob Johnson almost picked off. Trey Wright. Honestly, man, if he has another year like last year, how long do you keep him? Do you, do you, do you let him go? Because, I mean, he's really hurt this team. And it's, it's throws like that, that that really end up killing their you know just their chances here. So we'll see though. The defense has definitely been beefed up. The defense has always been decent for Chicago. You know they've never really had too many problems on defense. Um, we'll see though what happens. They do get on the board for the first time, and now we'll get to see what Minnesota can do. Casey Woods goes. No, he picks up a first down. Second, third, and seven, and they're driving down the field now. Trying to get inside the red zone, but it's an interception. It's Johnny Beasley picking off Casey Woods as they were close to possibly scoring again. It ends up not going in. So uh, now the Bears have the ball driving down the field. Incomplete pass. Second and 10. It's a 15-yard reception to Jonathan Stokely. And now they have another red zone attempt here. But can they finish what they've started? It would be nice to take the lead right before halftime here. First and ten. We'll see what happens here. I expect a run. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Zach Keister fighting. Oh, my God. What the heck? Just, what did I just witness? Yo, I'm sorry. I did not expect that to happen. He puts the team on his back. We get and we got Shepard gets embarrassed. And then what happened? Dude, he ran over three. And it happened so quickly. Bam. And then just, wow. He was literally like a cannon shooting out of a freaking 
Dude, that, he was like a cannonball shooting out of a cannon right there. I just want to take another look at this. This is crazy. It happened so fast. First off, BAM! And then, so this guy was already being pushed, okay? He wasn't even balanced, really. But 26, dude, he gets embarrassed as well. Look at that. Just, dude, you can't. This guy is on a whole nother level this year. He really is. I think he is playing the best he's ever played. Honestly, I don't think he was a top... I'm not going to say he's never been a top running back, but honestly, I would always have taken um, Caleb Goins over over Keister, but not this year. I don't think so. I think I think Zach Keister is the best running back. He's playing like he's never played before. And, uh, yeah, in season one, he wasn't even really the main running back. It was Mixon as he was on his last season. But, yeah, this year he is, he's killing it. He's doing things he's never done before. And the Bears look to try and possibly take increase this lead before halftime. Even more here. Lane McAllister, subscriber tight end, and thrown away. Will they get a field goal? They 50-yard field goal is good, and that's Armand Richards making it 13-7 now. Still a little bit of time before halftime, but it wouldn't go nowhere. And Minnesota does get the ball halftime, so that's good news. But they would end up going three and out as the Bears would get the ball. And then a little bit of defense to be played now. But then Minnesota drives down the field, and they're inside the red zone. That's wide receiver subscriber Bryant Watson finally getting his name called upon. And we'll watch the rest of this drive. Matter of fact, we to watch my debut as a head coach out in Atlanta if this game ends up going for too long. But I don't want to sim too much of it as it's than I thought it would be. I didn't expect Minnesota to put up such a good fight here today. But that's what they're doing. Here we go. Can Casey Woods second? He has so Oh, my God. He has so much time. But finally, Xavier making. That, that is a very important sack. Fifth sack this season for the subscriber. Billy Xavier. He's really been a, a big part of this defense. I know it doesn't get shown much, but those positions are sad. And honestly, the Bears should be thankful that he stayed at that position. Third and 13 now. I mean, that is one of the weakest points is the defensive line. Without Billy Xavier, I really feel like it would be a lackluster defensive line. That's Jay Reeds this time getting in for a sack. That possibly his first sack of the season. And Guess what? Minnesota does not finish their drive. A very a drive that they really needed to finish. Honestly, you don't want to give the ball back to the Bears without having the lead. Uh, Trey Wright knocked down pass third and ten, and it's a drop pass by Zach Keister. And now Minnesota has the ball driving down the field. They have momentum on their side. Jason Baxter knocks that one down. Third and 10. It's an 18-yard reception to Tyler Hibbinson, and they're in the red zone once again. This half has all been about men. What a game we have here today. Casey Woods, what's he going to do? Shotgun formation. He's going to step back. He's going to have time. Go down. Minnesota Vikings. And that is Watson, the subscriber wide receiver saying yeah get some of that he just found that it was they were in zone coverage as you guys can see if you're if, if you're a wide receiver and you pay attention to the zone you can find holes exactly how Watson was able to find it just takes a little bit of awareness a little bit of studying and that's exactly what they did that was a zone that the Bears have called multiple times and now it gets punished they get punished for it so going into the fourth quarter Bears losing Again, this is a game that you don't want to lose if you're the Bears. You want to you want to continue to dominate. And Jacob Johnson now is fueling this drive here in the fourth quarter. And Matthew Bailey now. It's second and one. And it's a nine-yard reception by Jacob Johnson. And we are going to watch the rest of this drive. Thank Jacob Johnson for putting you into this po position to try and take the lead back. Here we go. It's not going to be a run. Only man in the backfield is Trey Wright. Here we go. What can he do? He steps back. He's going to have time. He throws it in zone, and it's broken up trying to get to Jacob Johnson right there. But he drops it. That was a 50-50 ball, and the defense wins. Second and 10 now. Zach Keister in the backfield. Chances are handoff. No, it's a quick pass. And it's Jonathan Stokely, I believe, putting on the Jets. First career rushing touchdown. That's not a rushing touchdown, but okay. 
Jonathan Stokely. Wow, what a freaking play. The rookie takes the lead for his team. He catches it. He turns on the Jets, and that's the one of his that's his highest attribute right there is the quickness, the speed of this young kid. No one there to make the play. And just like that, the Bears take the lead right back. Honestly, I don't want to spoil the video by playing another game. Because this is like a classic game of a rivalry matchup. Minnesota versus the Bears. And so we'll probably not watch another one. Because this looks like it could go either way as it's now Minnesota driving down the field. Third and six. This is an important play. And it's a 10-yard reception by Alex Harnish. And they're driving down the field. It's Rico Mayo Jr., 23-yard reception. And we will watch the rest of this drive. What a freaking game we have here today. First and goal. Alec, oh, Casey Wood steps back. Throws it as he gets hit. It's tipped up and almost caught after the tip by number 88. But also a dangerous pass for Casey Woods, the throw right there. you got to be careful. Second and goal, it's going to be a handoff to Rico Mayo Jr. who's in nothing but speed and space, but that's something he doesn't have is power. If that was Zach Keister, I think he would have bulldozed right through. But he hits a brick raw right at the one-yard line. Here we go, Casey Woods going to keep it. Throws a dot, it doesn't matter. It's a touchdown, Minnesota Vikings. Have a freaking classic rivalry going back and forth here. Holy crap. Game. We have Minnesota Bears. Casey Woods said he was going to do it. Is he about to do it? I didn't expect it to be this close, I'll tell you that. But it's 24-20 to 20 right now. And um, Zach Keister does not look too happy. Talking to his defense right there like, hey, you know, come on. We need to stop. And so now the coach coming in between them there. You can definitely see the tension rising high in the Chicago as they struggle with the team they shouldn't. So here we go. It's kicked off. And now the Bears have the ball. Pass knocked down by Spikes. And 10. Jonathan Stokely, the rookie. Seven-yard reception. Third and three. It's a four-yard rush by Zach Keister keeping the drive alive. Incomplete pass. Second and 10. Three-yard pass to Jonathan Stokely. And once again, another third and seven. And a pass drop by Jacob Johnson. What do you do here? Do you go for it or do you punt it? And it looks like they definitely punt it. They believe in their defense. Pass knocked away. Second and ten. It's a two-yard rush there. And um, you know what? This is an important play. Let's let's watch this. Let's watch this play here. Two-minute warning goes off. The Minnesota Vikings are two two minutes away from upsetting the Chicago Bears here. What? will Casey Woods do I, I definitely wouldn't throw this ball I would definitely run it and that's exactly what they're gonna do and Mayo gets tackled and there it is so you make Chicago burn a timeout and now it's up to your defense so here we go we're gonna go ahead and watch the rest of this game fourth and six they'll punt it away trying to pin them back in Good field position. Zach Keister back there. Ooh, you got to be careful there. Um, Zach, surprised that they have Zach Keister back there. Well, <laughs> I don't know why they would have him back there, but they do. Let's go ahead change the possessions. Here we go. This is it. I think, Chicago, you got to score here. And you know what sucks? you got to score a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. First and ten. Trey Wright steps back. Going down the field wide open. That's Matthew Bailey. He's had a phenomenal career. This could be his last season. Not his team, but in the NFL. Been with Chicago his whole career. He's been a very loyal one. Winning the Super Bowl with this team. He's done his part. First and ten, Trey Wright steps back. Has time throwing it to Jacob Johnson. Almost intercepted there. Second and ten. Not a good play. It's never good to be down when you're in an EA Sports game. Because the clock management across the board is pretty crap. So, uh, yeah. It's not not looking too good for Chicago. Third and four here. It's going to be a delayed handoff to Zach Keister. And that was a surprise. Didn't expect that. They were playing for first down. That's all they were playing for. And it works. First and ten here. Trey Wright is going to keep it. 
What's he going to do with it? He has time. He needs to find a place to go with it, but he does not. Panic didn't want to throw it away, and that's a dumb play. Here we go. Trey Wright steps back. This time, knows who he's going to, and that's Jonathan. No, that's, excuse me, that's Matthew Bailey. And now he's in the zone. 30 seconds left. Hasn't called a timeout. Third and eight. What are you going to do? He's going to go down the field, and it's caught by Jacob Johnson. Call a damn timeout. What are you doing? 19 seconds left. Wow. What a freaking game. Here we go. First and 10. What an amazing game by Jacob Johnson. What an amazing catch that he just caught right there. Trey Wright steps back. What's he going to do? Please throw it. Do something with it. Oh, wow. Zach Keister dropped it. And that was actually for the best. I'm glad he dropped that. Second and 10. With the way Trey Wright's holding on to it, this could be the last play. Here we go. Trey Wright. He has it. Throws it as he gets hit. He got tackled short. Couldn't get out of bounds. That's game. That is game. Jonathan Stokely caught it and gets tackled immediately, and that's good defense by the Minnesota Vikings. They put pressure on Trey Wright. He had to throw it to the first person he's seen open. He throws it to Jonathan Stokely. I mean, he got cracked on that last play. I don't even blame him. He had no time whatsoever, and guess what? They lose. The Chicago Bears lose. Casey Woods throws three touchdown passes. And Trey Wright, what does he do? He does exactly what I said he does. He, he threw an interception, no no uh, touchdown. Um, he's got a lot to prove. He, I'm not going to take anything away from him. He is a Super Bowl champion quarterback. But time goes on. You can't live in the past. You got to prove consistently. And right now, I, I don't even see the Bears as a top threat. We'll see what they what they think about that. They do lose to Minnesota. But, um, yeah, we are going to go ahead. We're going to end it here. Next video, though, I will show highlights of a lot of the games so you can see your subscribers and stuff. And I want to eventually show one of my games for um, my head coach. I do wonder if I win my first. Let's find out if I win my first ever head coaching game here as I advance the week. We'll also see the standings around the league. So let's go over to my head coach, and I lose. So I lose my opener against Jacksonville, 35-21. So I am 0-1 in the NFL. Not the best start, but not the worst. It could have been. It could have been worse. And hopefully, I can win against the 0-4 Washington Redskins. So that will be it. Let's take a look at the standings really quickly, and then we'll end this episode. It is the Seattle Seahawks dominating Pittsburgh. Oh, we got to hop into a Pittsburgh game. That matter of fact, next episode we will. I know one of my subscribers wanted to see more Pittsburgh. Well, they're relevant now. They're the second best team in the league. And we will definitely hop into one of their games. Pittsburgh Steelers finally going to make a, a comeback on the series. They haven't really been that relevant in a while, but they're back. Look at, oh my God, the Super Bowl champions. The champions. The Indianapolis Colts. They're still they're they're ready to do it again. Four and one. They're on a four game win streak. They haven't lost since week one. The Dallas Cowboys win their game. They're on a four game win streak. They haven't lost since week one. The Wall. They're they're, they're making their fine. They're making a push. And then Casey Woods. I mean, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry, not Casey Woods, but freaking Hooten and, and his Arizona Cardinals. Jackie, um, Ryan Mackey. And, and that, that squad, 3-1, they're on a two-win streak. This is going to be one hell of a year. I'm excited. Raiders, Jamie Bell's doing their thing. A lot of good teams out here. And that's why I say I don't think that the Bears are a top team to worry about. I think, though, at best, they'll make it to the wild card. We'll see. And the Dolphins, man, we're on a three-game three losing streak. Packers, worst team in the league is Washington. And then the Saints. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll see you guys on the next one. And until, until then, have a great day.